So we're in Grand Town and this is the start of our two days canoeing on the Spey and this is David's car with his own personalised number plate. Here we go, rock and roll. So this is our lunch break. We've just had a, a dramatic incident which Mary will lead you through later this evening. But we feel we're lucky to be alive, don't we Mary? We certainly <laughs> do. <laughs> Hello, um, I'm with Mary Hemsworth, the director of the Spirit of Speyside Festival, and we've uh, done our first day on the Spey. Mary, how was it? It was uh, interesting. It was exhilarating, it was fun, it was scary, uh, and I have the bruises to prove it. Uh, there's a set of rapids called the Nokando Top, and uh, my canoe hit a rock shelf at the top and uh, tipped me out, and I went down two sets of rapids on my backside. And the surprise dram halfway through was the cherry on the top of a very nice cake. Would you like to uh, tell us what we had? Uh, we had a Balvenie and it was a 14 year old Caribbean cask and it was just the perfect dram for that particular point in the river at that particular point in the day. And then we ca canoed down as far as Abalau, our home of um, Abalau Rabuna and we passed a number of distilleries on the way, Crag and Moor, Nokando, Tamdu, Dalyun, um, I'm not sure, no, I'm just trying to think, Glen Farkless, there was a whole pile of distilleries that we passed on the way down the river. Oh, the river's amazing. It, it gives you a totally different perspective on Speyside. And of course at this time of year the river's looking fantastic. The only caveat to that is that because we haven't had very much rain, because Speyside is quite dry at times, uh, the water levels are quite low and if you pan round you'll see that uh, it's not quite as high as it should be today. Salmon has just jumped out of the water, but, sorry, <laughs> little distraction, enormous fish. It's very windy today, I'm expecting a difficult, it could be an added obstacle we weren't expected. So um, I'm with uh, Dave Craig, would you like to tell us about yourself a little bit please Dave? Hey, I'm Dave Craig, I, I run a company called Spirit of the Spey, uh, which is based mainly on uh, running trips on the river uh, in my open canoes and uh, if people want to we can uh, do distillery visits uh, en route. Oh, it's, uh, it's key. I, I often think about the Spey being a major artery uh, because if it wasn't for the Spey, there would be no whiskey industry. I mean, we have whiskey here because, uh, because of the kind of alluvial floodplains here. The, the soil is very rich, so they grew barley here and you have all the tributaries going into the Spey, uh, all the springs feeding the Spey, and they're the same springs that feed the distilleries now. And so the Spey is an integral part of, uh, of whisky making. Well, as I said earlier, uh, she's a very playful Lady Spey, and, uh, and so, yeah, she uh, she caught you yesterday, and uh, she'll be smiling a wee bit, but the thing is that she's very gentle with you as well. So, uh, I mean, I've paddled the Spey, say, in excess of 40 years, and uh, I've had, you know, thankfully no injuries uh, of note. People get an occasional bruise and, and that sort of thing. Yesterday uh, we launched uh, on Tulchan Estate, uh, just downstream of Advi Bridge, so it's in the area of Advi, uh, just upstream from Tormor when it comes to geographical location of distilleries. Uh, and we paddled from Tormor uh, uh, area down to, um, gosh, I've got a mental block where we went. We came down through Nakando basically. Uh, so on, on through Tolkien, uh, into, into, into Balandalach Estate, uh, into Nakando Estate, uh, and then you have obviously other distilleries, Landmarks, Tamdu, Nakando, uh, Cardu's not too far away, and, uh, and then we went on down to, under the lovely Karen Bridge, uh, where we passed the old site of the Imperial Distillery, just about to be de de developed by Shivers, and uh, Del Ewan, and then we ended up uh, here by the lovely Penny Bridge, built by James Fleming, the founder of Abbott Distillery uh, in Apple. For me, space sites are the best, and, and uh, yes, yeah, I've sort of had some lovely drumming moments uh, on this river, uh, due to quite a few distillers. Um, but I, I think uh, probably last night with you, having that ton 1401 uh, batch 8 was just uh, one of the best, uh, because I think David Stewart, the malt master for Balvenie, is such a genius. Yeah. And, uh, I may have a bias here, but certainly I think his Tun 1401s have just been absolutely superb. So that whiskey moment with you last night was, uh, was probably one of these great moments. 
Well, we've done it. We've finished, and here we are at Spay Bay, and I'm with Mary. Today was excellent. Brilliant. I didn't get wet. So, all in all, it was a very good day. The canoeing today was really good. Uh, there were some nice, long rapids, but nothing, you know, big. No big boulders. Um, some technical, very technical rapids, but other than that, beautiful, beautiful scenery. Beautiful, long, long, very still straits. So really I just started at Upper Lower, my apologies, Upper Lower, and then down through past the Lovett Telford Bridge at Craigellachie, uh, and then on through many of the, the best estates, in fact, in terms of fishing, uh, estates such as Delfer, uh, Rothes and Aikenways, uh, and so on. Uh, past Rothes in particular, which uh, in whisky terms is, is pretty important, given the fact that it is uh, at least uh, four still working distilleries, uh, including Glen Grant and Glen Rothes and such. Uh, and then we went on down through uh, Fockabers, uh, where we have the world famous Baxter's Food Factory and then uh, off to uh, just to lovely Spay Bay and I think Spay Bay is one of the unique things about uh, the Spay is that um, it, uh, you're actually confluencing at a, a very rural location which is very unusual most other major British rivers confluence uh, where there's a conurbation so it's one of the lovely things about uh, about the Spay one of the many lovely things about the Spay uh, but yesterday is a day of contrast the fact you do start with these lovely estates with the big majestic uh, river banks with uh, lovely uh, just just tree tree filled green banks uh, and then they, they are real estates they're, they're real kind of uh, traditional Scottish estates and then you, you come to um, just above Fockabers and suddenly uh, no more hills no more high parts uh, it just all flattens out into to raised beaches so every day on the Spay is different I mean a lot of my trips are are four or five day trips and each day uh, of these longer trips it is completely different starting from very rural a uh, very arable kind of uh, almost hill farming uh, on the first few days and then you end up uh, in these very and sometimes manicured estates where they have kind of cut down trees and manicured the banks and such. Probably Macallan's one of the distilleries that's almost taking its uh, water from the main stem. I mean people will be aware that, that uh, none of the distilleries actually do, although they're called space sides, no one actually takes their their uh, water from the main stem of the river. I think probably one of the distilleries taking water from a, a main stem of any of the tributaries is uh, Speyside here up uh, at King UC. Uh, it takes its water from the uh, from the river Tromi, but uh, other distilleries are taking the water from the uh, the springs and the and the, the tributaries. And no one's really taking their water from the main stem, but Macallan's. Uh, water source is very close to the Spey, but st it's still not means Fishing uh, on the estates is still, still very Victorian. I mean, uh, many of the villages around the Spey sprung up, particularly in the upper Spey here in Badenoch, uh, many of the villages new to Moor King Easy sprung up in Victorian times because it was very fashionable for the toffs of London to come and fish and hunt and shoot in, in this area, in, in Deeside, in Speyside, because Queen Victoria and Albert, they came up from London and, and uh, came to Balmoral and so on and did that sort of thing. And it is quite Victorian, and as you say, the gillies all wear their tweeds, and each estate has got its different tweeds. Uh, for example, the gillies at Nakando Estate, uh, they wear a, a particular tweed uh, with a kind of a, I think it would be a, called a, uh, a hound's tooth kind of uh, pattern, and that's a, they, they, their wool is actually made in the Nakando uh, wool mill. So it, it, there is a, a, a tradition, it's kind of steeped in tradition. Uh, so if you and I want to share a dram one night, I might actually get in my curragh and, and paddle across to, to have a dram with you. And it is an iconic salmon fishing river, and of course the salmon are so beautiful, and it's lovely when you do see them uh, leaping, these uh, uh, fish hell-bent on getting up to, to procreate, basically. They may get a little wet, feet will at least get wet, and sometimes boats do capsize, as you know from <laughs> your first day with me. Uh, but that's part of it, and that's, that's part of the, the fun and the, and the charm of the whole thing.